Some common acronyms you'll see in networking are CSMA-CD and CSMA-CA. Let's look at both of these and see what both of these mean to the networks that we use today. Let's start with CSMA-CD. The CS in CSMA stands for Carrier Sense. That means that the device that will be communicating on the network is listening in to determine, is someone else transmitting? And if there is someone else transmitting, we're not going to transmit over them. That's the Carrier Sense part of CSMA. The MA piece means that there will be multiple access. So there's many different devices on the network. They're all going to try to communicate together, and they're going to be using CSMA to be able to do that. For the first CSMA that we'll look at, which is the CD, that stands for collision detect. In Ethernet, a collision is when two stations are talking at once, and that signal goes across that shared medium, and everybody now can't hear anything that's going on because two devices are talking at the same time. It's a bit of a scary name. People think collisions are a bad thing. But in reality, collisions are simply the way that Ethernet works. There's a whole standard set up for CSMA C. If you're sending information, nobody else is transmitting, and you transmit a little bit of the frame, you can tell, the Ethernet device can tell, oh, wait a second, I'm hearing interference from somebody else who just happened to communicate at exactly the same time that I did. And so what happens is that there is a recovery algorithm. Both stations stop communicating. There's a randomization process that takes place. And then they start transmitting again. And the randomization means that the station that transmitted at the same time as each other, those two stations, are now going to transmit at different times. So you're not going to have that same conflict you had before. Now one station begins to transmit. The other station can now hear it. Since it has carrier sense, it's not going to transmit. It waits until that's done. And then it begins the transmission process. So it's a very standard way for Ethernet to work. Now, because all of these stations are able to hear each other, that means this must be a half duplex communication. It must be on a hub. With switched communication, we almost always exclusively use full duplex communication, which means we can transmit and receive at the same time. With half duplex, you can't do that. You can only transmit or you can only receive, but you can't do both of those simultaneously. And so we don't usually see CSMA CD being used much any longer because nobody's really using shared media or a half duplex connection to be able to communicate. Full duplex, much more efficient. Hubs are no longer available. Nobody's manufacturing them. Switch networks are completely normal to see. And almost everybody is setting those up to use full duplex communication. With CSMA-CA, we still have the CSMA part, but the CA stands for collision avoidance. That's a little bit different than collision detection. We're going to try to avoid having any type of collision to begin with. We see this most commonly on wireless networks, because there's no way for the wireless device to be able to hear if there are two stations communicating at a time. That's because a radio transmitter is going to overload its own receiver. It can't hear anything except itself whenever it's sending traffic out over the wireless network. So you can't have a collision detection on a wireless network. You have to plan to avoid a collision from ever occurring in the first place. It's common to see this implemented as something called RTS and CTS. This is ready to send and clear to send. There's usually one station, and usually it's your access point, that is the central point that's managing all of this. And stations are communicating out, and they're saying, hi, I'm ready to send some traffic. But before they can, the access point has to specifically grant them access and say, yes, you are clear to send. Please send me that data. And because the station has to wait for that clear to send, the access point can be sure that only one station is communicating at any particular time. This is a very common way to look at this, is that if you're doing this RTS-CTS exchange, and your 802.11 networks don't necessarily have to, but most often they will be, they'll be checking to see if the channel is idle. They'll transmit or ready to send, and they'll listen. And they'll wait to get the clear to send. And if they get that clear to send, they transmit the data. If they don't get the clear to send, they wait for a random amount of time, 
and then they check to see if it's idle, and then they send the request again. So on a very busy wireless network, you can really have to wait quite a bit of time to be able to get your turn to be able to communicate. This also solves a problem when you're on wireless networks where you might be on one side of the network and you can see the access point, but there may be another device on the other side of the access point that you can't hear but the access point can hear everybody. So the access point can tell station A, you're clear to send, or station B, you're clear to send. And neither of those stations needs to be able to hear each other communicating. And that's really the benefit of that CSMA collision avoidance is making sure that everybody's able to communicate without having any of those signals overlap each other.